Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video we're taking a look at the Bitmain Antminer E9 and trying to figure out a couple things. We know it's pretty good, we know the merge is on its way, but with the merge, can it mine Ethereum? Well, unfortunately I had some issues. Um, I'm not sure if there will be some type of firmware update or something like that, but I tried uh, Nanopool, Ethermine, and even F2 Pool, and unfortunately it seems to not really connect. Even with uh, proper restarts, it seems to not really connect. Now, obviously, just like most miners, uh, it's going to take about 15, 20 minutes for it to actually reflect at the pool. But it just kept on saying abnormal pool connection status. And it will say abnormal over there at the top. Again, uh, trying on F2 pool, pretty much the same thing. Now, I did get it to say normal. But it wasn't really doing anything. So I'm going to test again. I got one more chance with this. And we're going to see if it can actually uh, run pretty well. Now, idle temps is something I'm very intrigued by uh, when it comes to both GPU, ASICs, and FPGAs. And obviously, uh, again, Red Panda Mining has some pretty decent ambient air temperatures there. The inlet temperature is around 30 degrees Celsius, which is about average. But uh, it still performed very well, even when it was hot. Uh, getting a consistent hash rate and a consistent, uh, you know, a number of shares, right? There are some invalid and rejected shares, but nothing too crazy. And of course, uh, testing not the full 24 hours. You have to see Red Panda Mining's uh, video or update to to get that confirmed data. But it, it's it's pretty good um, as far as sustainability and making sure that it's hitting the hash rate that it needs to. Um, and it's just pretty much killing it. Uh, right now, we look at their main dashboard. You know, the real-time hash rate keeps fluctuating from, you know, 31, 3200 down to 24, sometimes 22, 2000 uh, mega hash. Uh, but we're, we're staying pretty consistent. We're getting pretty good hash from each board. There's two hash boards in here uh, sitting around 1240 mega hash. Uh, and then the inlet temperatures you can see here ranging anywhere from 53 to 60 degrees Celsius to outlet anywhere from 60 to 67. Um, obviously, the fan speeds are a little bit higher than yesterday's video or the previous day's video. Uh, we're around 4,000. I think the max, because if, if we go to settings, the max is not even selected. We have to check this in order to hit max. And so it's on auto, and it's doing a pretty good job of maintaining itself. Um, and I'm, I'd be interested to see, I think Red Panda thinks it's 8,000 RPM. I thought it was 5,000, but obviously I was wrong because look at that. We're already at 4,440, um, and it's on auto with the temperatures still being relatively good. So if this thing was a little bit toasty, I'm pretty sure those fans would get really loud, which matter of fact, let me go ahead and insert a clip of the sound and let's see if it can mine some Ethereum Classic. looking too good so i mean it's working the problem is is you can't specify and tell the miner uh hey it's etc hash not eth hash you can see the algorithms up here there's no way to change that obviously there's different configurations in here there's probably you know we can manage the password the firmware we can manage ip uh settings dhcp and stuff like that but in the settings section, we can't really specify anything. And it's not like, you know, T-Rex or any other minor program where you can, you know, do dash A, ETC, hash, and that would actually affect or tell the miner that we're mining, um, you know, ETC. So unfortunately, while it does show positive results, we're able to connect. Uh, it does take a few restarts. It doesn't actually work you know even at the pool side we're seeing that one miner is online however because you know it's rejected shares which we can see there's 566 rejected um it's not actually going through successfully therefore it's not really mining ethereum classic even though everything looks good network status is good real-time hash rate looks good everything tells you it's working it's obviously going to be rejected because we just need to be able to change the algorithm now will 
Bitmain or Antminer basically allow a firmware update to let the E9 owners flash or update their miners to be able to mine Ethereum Classic? Well, I just have to wait and see. But as of right now, the answer is no, which is not really a surprise, right? This That's why you see on many of these uh, websites, Coin Mining Central and such, uh, you know, Crypto Miner Bros, is they have ETC miners and then they have uh, Ethereum miners. Uh, many people are buying these ETC miners, but I'm hoping uh, quite a few of the Ethereum miners will be able to get an update in the future. At least I hope so. Otherwise, it'd be a paperweight. But of course, you saw the gap in profitability. It's almost 40 to $30 in fiat or quite a bit down, you know, going from Ethereum or nice hash mining Ethereum down to the next most profitable coin. So we'll just have to wait and see how things pan out. But that's going to do it for today's video. Please do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date. So let's check out links in the description to help support the channel. Uh, Dojo.com does have uh, one of my first shirts to get involved in mine crypto. If you want to go ahead and check that out, it's down in the description. And I will catch you next one. Take care.